Okay, I'm trying to pop out this Shabbat teaching on empathy. Um, let's start with um, the last scripture we left off with was, let's go to John 11. John 11, 33 through 35. You got to have empathy in order to be in ministry, in order to be successful with people. Because if you can't walk in everybody in nobody's shoes, how are you going to ever be able to relate to them? You know, I just came from that meeting and because I had walked in empathy, God did a thing. Stay tuned for that. But, um, John 11, 33 to 34 says, When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. This is when Lazarus died. Jesus wasn't weeping because Lazarus died. You know, he knew he was the resurrection. But he was showing empathy to the people because, you know, he wanted, he's showing that he could relate to what they're, they're feeling, what they're going through. But, you know, he was weeping because they were weeping. They really didn't pay attention. They really didn't see him as the resurrection. You know, you can't weep for somebody knowing you got the answer. You can't, if they would have believed that he was the resurrection and the life that he preached and he spoke about, they wouldn't have been standing there weeping. They'd have came to him, come on, Jesus, Lazarus in here sleeping. We need you to come in here and wake him up. When you know something, when you believe something, you, you handle it differently. But he wept because they didn't believe. He had walked before them. He had walked with them. He had helped them. He had healed them. He had done things for them. They saw the resurrection, you know, walking amongst them. And even in death, even in Lazarus' death, they didn't believe. These are the people that walked directly with him. I ain't talking about the multitude, you know, that saw him passing by the way. These are the leaders that walked directly with him. The people that were close to him, his inner circle. These are those and they still, you know, was having an issue. They didn't see him as the resurrection. They kept listening to what he prophesied and what he was talking about, but they didn't it didn't resonate with him that he was the resurrection. So he wept because he was showing empathy, relating to them. You know, you y'all don't believe me. But they thought he wept because Lazarus was dead. But he said Lazarus was sleeping. It's all in your perspective. That's how we know what you believe. When something happens, your faith is determined in how you process that information. That's your faith. Like, I went on consecration. My inner circle, I text and let them know I'm on consecration. You know, my phone is shut down. You know, um, my emergency people can get to me. The ones that have an issue lets me know what they believe or their level of maturity. The ones that can't get to me that like getting to me all the time because they need and they not looking at nobody else's need. They self-centered. Them the ones that act like toddlers and have temper tantrums and have a fit. So, Sometimes you got to disconnect. I said that before. You got to disconnect to see what's around you. So Jesus wept not because Lazarus was dead. Jesus wept because they still didn't believe. He walked amongst them and they still didn't believe. Let's go to John 13, 34. Yeah, John 13, 34 
and 35 says, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. But this shall all men know, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have one, love one to another. You got to have love. If you with somebody that ain't loving you, they don't have God. If you the one running around loving somebody all the time, but nobody's loving you, you casting your pearls before swine because they don't know how to appreciate you. They, you know, like pigs trample over pearls. They, men don't, men, you know, people don't know how to appreciate you. They just trample all over you. They just use the mess out of you because they don't love you. They don't have God in their heart because if you have God in your heart, and this scripture too, if you have God in your heart, I don't know if it's one of the scriptures we have, but if you have God in your heart, you're going to have love in your heart. You're going to have empathy in your heart. You're going to want to know. You're going to want to relate to people. You know, you're going to want to bond with people. You want to help people out. You know, iron sharpens iron. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. But if you just want self-centered individual who's running around getting all everything you need by any means necessary, then you don't have God in your heart. It, when you have God in your heart, you are not looking at your own needs because God is supplying your needs. You're looking at the needs of others. You taking care of God's people. You That's what you focus on is taking care of God's people. And as you take care of God's people, God is taking care of you. That's how God works. As you give, he didn't say take. As you give to others, God gives to you. There's no take, I got to go get this. I got to go get that. If you are pulling on somebody all the time, that means you ain't got you ain't with, got uh, a prayer life with God that's sufficient to where he, or you being disobedient, you're not doing what God say do. So if you are doing what thus saith the Lord and loving on people and taking care of his people, the least of these, you know, he said the least of these. If you are taking care of the least of these, then God is taking care of you. I run around every day, wake up taking care of the least of these. I don't have a job. I run around loving on people. The least of these. I'm making sure needs are met. I see needs and I try to make sure they're met in, you know, God's grace. That's how I'm blessed. I don't run around here asking everybody for gas money. Run around here asking everybody for food. I don't have to. And if I do ask for food for the food pantry, it ain't for me. It's for others. It may flow through my house, but it's for others. So I give out of my overflow. That's why I have most of the stuff I have is I have an overflow. I have. I just gave a whole bunch of clothes. I thought just a few things I was going to pick it up. But that a whole neighborhood needed clothes. Them, them bags is gone. I don't know where the bags are. Them bags is gone. So I know I need to get more clothes. That You know, you give out of your overflow. If you're always thinking about other people, you know, thinking about the needs of others, then you ain't sitting in your mess, self-centered, sitting in your mess. That's how you get do this thing. You think about others and let God think about you. You don't sit and worry in what you're doing. You don't sit and worry in what you need. You don't sit and worry about, you know, you don't have gas, you don't have food. You get up and do what God say do. And God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. You know, we have these titles and stuff, but our lives be messed up. That's because we're not walking in the title. We're not walking in the office. To get the title, that's easy. The, the walking in it, that's the hard part. And, and when you tend your field, the field that God gives you, the God, the, the field that God called you for, then that's the field that God is going to supply. That's, he's obligated to bless you because you are being obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So this is what I'm saying. We got to love one another. If you sitting around on your soapbox and ain't loving nobody, that's the reason why you ain't getting love. That's the reason why your needs ain't being met. That's the reason why God ain't supply. That's the reason why God ain't flowing in your life because you don't have God. You got to have God in your heart in order for God to flow in your life. Let me get off of that soapbox 
And let's go to Romans 12, 15. Romans 12, 15. It say, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Some of us are so stuck in our mess, in our stuff. When somebody get blessed, we turn up our face. We can't even be rejoiced when somebody gets get else gets blessed. And that's a check in my spirit because when I get blessed, I see who's, who's rejoicing with me. And I see who's got an issue, who got an attitude, who feeling some type of way. Them the ones I just slowly but surely drift away from they can't get the hand of me they can't they can't you know continue to be get the blessings that god has flowing through me if they you know they got stuck face you know you just if they can't rejoice with you but you rejoicing with them you that's a harvest that you can't reap you sow it into something that's not fertile we're going to do another message on that, sowing and reaping, because you not only sow seeds and sow money, you sow discord, you sow whatever emotion you got going on in your heart, all of that. If you cannot rejoice with people, then you need to de go get God to clear you out, to clean you up. Are you so stuck in a place to where, you know, life is not working for you, God is not working for you, that you can't rejoice with others? That means God need to get in there and clean you up. You constipated. Something wrong with you. I can rejoice with any and everybody because I know that God, if he did it for them, he can do it for me. I just know that. It all depends on if I want it. Am I doing the work to get it? You know, find out what they did. Find out how they got it. It's a process. God just don't slap people with stuff. If they ain't ready for it, if they ain't prepared for it. A lot of people don't want to go through the process. They don't want to do the work. You know, yeah, he slapped me with the Cadillac. And I know people get tired of hearing it, but this is what I can show you. He slapped me with the Cadillac, but it's it's not easy keeping it up. He keeps it, but I got to keep continuing to doing what I was doing before. I got to keep loving and blessing people and doing the work and the will and the purpose of him in order to keep it, to maintain it. I got to keep doing, I can't just get in my feelings and be start flossing in the Cadillac and don't let nobody else get in. Don't use it for ministry. It'll be gone. That part. Let's go to first Corinthians, uh, 12 and 26. First Corinthians 12 and 26. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members with joy with it. That's empathy. When people go through something, those connected to you go through it too. For example, substance abuse. When people are addicted to drugs or alcohol or whatever. You know, when people, when I was addicted, everybody around me went through that with me. They had to suffer with me. Just like anything else, when people are blessed, I'm blessed. My children, you know, they're blessed. That's empathy. You walk in people's shoes. You want to find out what they're going, how, the, you know, you can relate to people. If you are with somebody that you can't relate to, don't sit there and be trying to tell them nothing because you may steer them wrong. What you need to do is refer them to somebody that has been through what they've been through so they understand. If one member suffers, all members suffer with it. That's people that, that's got God. That's got love. God don't just bless you and then let you go through the stuff by yourself. No, he go through it with you. He suffers with you. You can tell the people that's got God because they suffering with you. They not only just rejoicing with you and, you know, being on with the accolades with you. They're suffering with you too. If you got people around you that don't want to suffer with you, let them stay where they at. They not. They just want to be when you up, but when you down, you ain't got nobody around. When when you when you laying there in bed with COVID and you, your kids are sitting at home and can't do nothing, but you know wondering if they mama dying on the hospital bed and you ain't got nobody there. Them the ones that ain't suffering with you. Them the ones that just want to be there for you while you're up. 
or want to be speculating. You know, you got to have people in your corner that's really in your corner. That's really, you know, for you. Um, let's go to Galatians 6 and 2. It's a lot of scriptures. Galatians 6 and 2. A lot of scriptures that I could go to. Bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. When you bear your brother or your sister's burdens, you fulfill the law of Christ. You fulfill the anointing, the anointed one. You're walking in God's purpose. You're walking in God's plan. When you bear the burdens of others, you know, when people get a burden and you run off, you ain't got Christ. Christ bared the burden of us all on Calvary, on that cross. He got up there and, well, I'm going to say he allowed them to put him up there and he didn't have to do it. And he, had, he stayed up there when he didn't have to either. He could have got down. All power was in his hand. He could have got down. We need to pay attention to that. We need to recognize that. That Christ bear one another's burdens. He bared all our burdens when he got up there. He didn't have to stay up there. He, he stayed the course. Some of us can't stay the course. Like that man that was in the in the book of Mark, that when Christ got crucified, he stood there until they laid hands on him. And when they laid hands on him, he wiggled his mess himself so bad, he wiggled out of his clothes. He ran down the street butt naked. Because he that's as far as he could take it. You know, sometimes when stuff lay hold on you, you you can't bear the burden of nobody else. You want to take off and let that person be by themselves and deal with it by themselves. You ain't got God. If you can't go all the way, you know, don't even try to, don't, my way not even start. You got to be able to go through stuff with people. You got to be able to walk with people. If you can't walk with people, that's a problem. I've walked with people, helping them, blessing them, making sure they got food, making sure they got gas, making sure they got this, that, and the other. But because I want to go on consecration with the Lord, they can't walk with me. Because I want to be with my father, they can't walk with me. They can't step back from me for a little bit. They can't do that. I'm going to get off that soapbox. And that's not really a burden. Actually, it puts a burden on them because they can't get to me. They don't have access to me. When I say I'm being with the Lord, I need to hear what God say. That means I should check out, get everybody out my ear so I can hear what God say. And I'm so glad I did because woo, wait, wait till I'm ready to release this next thing. Let's go to Ephesians 4.32. It says, and be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake have forgiven you. Run around here, we got grudges, holding grudges against people, thinking that's holding them hostage, putting them in bondage. But all that's doing is holding us hostage. People going on with their life, doing their life. But we don't see it. You know, because we too busy sucking our mess trying to hold stuff against them instead of giving them grace. It releasing our own self. Forgiveness releases you. It don't release them. They already free. They was free enough to do whatever they did to betray you or whatever. You ain't never held them in bondage. You sitting there holding a grudge. You holding your own self in bondage. You know, and in doing that, you got to know what they, you got to have walked in their shoes. You got to understand why that individual felt they needed to, 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 to do that. You know, some people just want to be validated. Some people just want to be seen. Some people just want to be heard. And by any means necessary, they'll do whatever they got to do to do it, to get. So it may not be as blown up as you think it is. Maybe it's just something as simple. I just want to be appreciated. I just want to be validated or whatever. No, that don't make it right. No, that don't make say that they supposed to do it that way. But some people in psychology, bad attention is better than no attention at all. And that's basically what that says, what that is. When we're not validating, appreciating people and noticing people, people get in their feelings and they feel some type of way. And they do certain things that may hurt others, but they that's how they got the validation. That's how they got the recognition. And like I say, I'm not saying it's right, but are we being 
empaths to where we making sure that we seeing the needs of others and not so much in our own self, you know, trying to get our own validation. Stay outside yourself validating others. Stop trying to, you know, you know, validate everybody you're around, I guess. But make sure you validate your own self. Make sure, you know, and the the one that validates you the more and can't nobody else do it better than he can is God. God validated me. Like I say, wait till you hit Philippians 2 and 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem one other better than themselves. Let nothing be done in strife. Don't do anything just because you're trying to get back at somebody or doing something just because you're trying to gain something. Do it for the glory of the Lord. Don't do anything just to be doing, just to be doing it, just doing it for nothing. Do it for the glory of the Lord. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. You know, esteem each other, encourage each other, you know, better than you would yourself. As you doing that for them, somebody else is doing it for you. That's how it's supposed to go. Love flows forward. You don't ever see love reach back or a river reach back to get anything. Love flows. When you flow, you keep moving forward. You don't too busy worried about what's coming back at you. Yeah. So when you giving to people and they're not reciprocating or somebody else is not, you know, or giving to you, God is opening your eyes because you're looking for reciprocation when when you're not being blessed, when you pouring out and your well is running dry. If you see that person paying it forward, giving to somebody, that's reciprocation too. They giving it. So as you give to them, they give to others. The cycle continues. Don't just be giving to something to somebody that's selfish, that's in they self. They ain't giving to nothing else. All you doing is giving into a bottomless pit. That's all you doing is giving into something that is bottomless and it just goes at them and it stops. It don't go nowhere else. So let's go to, what was we at? Let's go to Colossians 3 and 12. I'm trying to get out of here and take care of my kids, do what I got to do. I'm trying to rush this word, finish this. Colossians 3 and 12 say, Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. These are the fruits of the spirit. We got to put on those as the elect of God. Those are the ones that's mature, the leaders. We got to put these on holy and beloved. The mercies, bowels of mercy, kindness. This is how we supposed to be. We ain't supposed to be running around here taking people head off, having, you know, raising our voice at people because we can't get our way. We supposed to have peace on the inside of us. We supposed to be able to walk with people long suffering. We supposed to be able to deal with people. We supposed to be able to go through with people. We ain't supposed to be afraid to go through nothing. No, you going on through that. Girl, I don't need to do that. I, I, I don't need to, you know, I don't want that to hit my house. We ain't supposed to be like that. We supposed to be loving, going through one to and love one another. Let's go to um, Hebrews 4. Hebrews. Hebrews 4, 14 through 16. Oh, more. Oh, I got one more scripture. Hebrews 4, 14 through 16 says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Jesus was somebody that could be touched. We got some indig dignified dignitaries sitting up places they can't be touched you can't contact them you can't do nothing with them all they want to do is stand up on the soapbox preach to you and go home that ain't how jesus rolled you know 
They he was able to be touched with their infirmities. The woman with the issue of blood. She was, I mean, she felt like she could get her head cut off because back in them days, but especially a woman wasn't supposed to be touching no man, no way. Wasn't supposed to be coming to no man. But um, he could be touched by the infirmities and he wasn't scared that he was going to melt. He wasn't scared that he was going to jump off on him. He stayed prayed up. He stayed with the father. He stayed talking to God. So all these dignified folk, that want to preach on a soapbox, but you can't get to them. You can, you know, you can't talk to them. You can't get a word in edgewise with them. That ain't how God rolled. How you going to heal something if you ain't never been, you know, be in the place to know, first of all, that there's a sickness. And second of all, you can't, the doctor even got to be in the room of, you know, a patient. You know, he got to touch them, you know, to do surgery. He even got to go and touch the, the person. But we so high and mighty and dignified that we can't be touched by the infirmities of others because we don't want stuff to hit our house. You know, if you prayed up and it's the will of God, God got you. He going to protect you. There was a situation to where I had clients in a house full and I had to go do COVID tests. I had came out of COVID. I still got to do my job. Well, I'm supposed to be scared. He the healer. I, that's the, not believe him to be the healer. So I had to go over there. I went over there, masked up, prayed up. God went in with me. Went in there, tested all them people. Three of them came positive, two of them negative. And walked out. What was I supposed to do? Be scared to go in there? No, y'all got this. No, y'all. No. If, you, if I believe he the healer, I'm going to act like he a healer. If I believe what he say, then I'm going to act like, you know, what he, what he said is true. I ain't going to be scared. Um, last scripture is 1 Peter 3 and 8. I'm trying to catch this thing before it, fall, it um, go off and get hot. I don't want it to get hot and call up. Then I got to splice it and all of that. 1 Peter 3 and 8 says, finally... Be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. We all supposed to be on one accord, one mind. Which means if somebody going through something, we all should be going through that with that person, that individual, to help them out. We all should be loving and compassionate one to another. We all supposed to be in a mindset to help that individual. Not just leave them off by the wayside to deal with by themselves. Not to sit over there and take advantage of them. You know, they're in a grieving state. And we want to do whatever we're going to do to take advantage of them while they're in a grieving state to help our own self to better our lot. No, we don't be like that. That's the enemy. That's the Antichrist. We supposed to love one to another, have compassion with one another. If somebody's grieving, we grieving with them. Jesus wept. He, what was he supposed to do? Come up there and laugh at him? Ha ha ha. I'm the resurrection and the life. No, he wept. He showed empathy. He showed that he could relate to them. He was relating in a different way, but he was. He didn't want to come up and laugh in their face. But I told y'all, I was the resurrection. What you, what, what's wrong with you? He didn't do that. But let some of us get in our flesh and we do that. Anyway, that is the Shabbat study for this week. The conclusion of empathy. I'm going to say empathy part two. <laughs> and we'll see where God wants to go next week. Or he might even cut this out because he just dropped something else in my spirit that might take more time. And I might be doing something else on Saturday. But uh, let's see what the Lord say. Y'all stay blessed.